Welcome to Big Wednesday Night. And oh, what a Wednesday night we are going to experience. There are many things happening in our world. Did your phone go off today and this afternoon? Did an emergency come up on your phone? Did your phone start buzzing? Mine did. The whole world and everyone that owns a phone, the alert system of emergency system, was ignited by the government today. Did you read that Israel has, is being bombed by Lebanon and Gaza? What is going on? What is happening? And is Iran behind these bombings? Things are happening from Washington, D.C. to around the world. But thanks be to God that God is with his people. These are last days we're living in. Now we're talking about last days. Now you may live another 500 days or you may live another 30 to 40 to 50 more months or maybe 100 months if the Lord tarries. But these are very special days. God is moving for his last time upon the earth, into China, into Russia, into Africa, and right there where you are. And tonight, signs and wonders. Now that we have stepped into the double portion season, we must take advantage. We must learn. We must ask God for the best gifts. Tonight in the service, that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go straight to the scriptures. I'm going to show you how God tells us how we can get the gifts, the gift of knowledge, the gift of wisdom, the gift of faith, the gift of miracles, the gift of laying on of hands, the gift of prophetic utterance. How do I get that gift to operate? so I can have wisdom in the contract that I'm signing, the knowledge to raise my children. How can the gift of miracles operate in my life when I need a miracle? I'm going to release and, and show you in the Word of God how it is released. Prepare yourself. Be ready. If you're a businessman, if you're a housewife, if you're retired, or you might even be a person that is, has an illness, or there might be a disease in your body. Maybe you're in a financial crisis. Maybe you're just in a position, you need a miracle within your own spirituality. Tonight is the night. It will be a night to be remembered. You don't wanna miss it. I'm gonna be right here. We're going to be doing some very unique things tonight on this Wednesday night because now we have stepped into the season of double portion. Yesterday was the conclusion of the Feast of Tabernacles and this was the season in which we believed the Lord would come. He hasn't come, death hasn't come, meaning that God's getting ready to do a mighty, mighty work. Will you be one of the chosen ones? Will you be the one in which God says, I'm going to impart a special gift upon you tonight? That impartation is gonna take place. That impartation can take place by you hearing the word of God, focusing in. Do you wanna bless your children? Do you wanna bless your grandchildren? Do you want to pray and believe that your children will not be lost, nor that your children will not have severe severe injuries or accidents or the enemy trying to destroy them. The Bible talks about the enemy comes to destroy. How can I pray the prayer that that enemy will not touch my child, touch my grandchild? No, you're gonna learn the impartation tonight. And I am personally, through the word of God, go to impart speak gifts upon you. That's how it happens. Also the laying of hands, teaching you how that is imparted. So tonight, I'm very excited about Big Wednesday night. So let's go into the service.
turn the volume up, worship, let's sing, and then let us prepare for the word of the Lord as I bring the impartation of signs and wonders. By the way, I'm expecting great miracles to happen. Signs and wonders, we're in the double portion. This is the time in which just the miraculous, money happens, uh, favor happens, blessings happens. So let's go into the big Wednesday night and let's experience together signs and wonders.
wrestle. Every victory is in you, Jesus. Every blessing we find in you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You just take a moment and thank the Lord tonight. There's so much to be thankful for. Thank you, Jesus.
declare your blessing tonight. We receive your blessing, Lord. May his favor be upon and a thousand generations. Your family, your children. Just receive that blessing tonight, church. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you in the morning. In the morning, in the your coming and going. Weeping and rejoicing, my God is for you. He is for you. My God is for you. My God is for you. He is for you. May His favor, may His favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family and your children. I'm going to get back up. He is for me. My friends may not like me. I may make a mistake among my relatives. I, 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 I didn't mean. I just, I just stumbled and fall. And they may be against me because they hold it against me. But I've come tonight for somebody who is for me. I can't hear you. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. Oh, come on, get some of that tonight. He is for me. He is for me. He is for you. Come on. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. Father, we thank you tonight because your presence is right here. 
it's so close so close so close that you told us I'm in the praise of my people on the tip on the tip of our tongue when we sang amen that's how close you are in our face, in our spirit. You are here. And you are not against us, you're for us. And even though we have failed, and even though condemnation trails us like a hunting dog, you, O oh God, have not come to condemn us but you have come to love us. I want to say thank you. Can I have somebody help me? I want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And Lord, you are here in such a special way and the presence of your spirit is on the tip of all of our tongues. You're in our face with a smile. And I'm so glad, Lord, that you don't look at the bad, but you look at the good. And yet, you've given us the responsibility to look at the bad. You don't even have to tell us we've done wrong. We already know. So we say, Lord, forgive us. Thank you for your mercy. Oh, thank you for your mercy. Somebody help me say thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace. Somebody help me say thank you for your mercy. Thank, thank you for your mercy. mercy. And Lord, you know the number of hairs upon each head and you know every person's story. Watching in, in this vast auditorium, everybody who has worked hard and went to and fro and decisions had to be made today. And God, some were good and some were not so good and there were pressures and there was the talkbacks and there was the discipline and then there was those arguments and then there was those laughing moments and then there was those feel-good moments. But the best part of the day is being right here with you. Right here with you. And we want you to know God no party, no concert, no movie, no family reunion, no being even with our friends, no eating out, no, no vacation takes the place of being in your presence. We thank you, God, for that. We thank you, God, for that. I need a couple thank yous from somebody. We thank you, Lord, help me. Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I'm not ashamed to ask you boldly to touch every single attender, hearer and viewer, because there might be something wrong in our bodies that maybe some know and maybe some don't know. But I'm going to ask you because it was at your request, Lord, that you said, you ask anything in my name. What a privilege. Ask anything in my name. And so in this moment of your presence, I'm going to ask you in the name of Jesus, that every person experiences healing, deliverance, an answer to prayer. In the name of Jesus, the person that's worried about something, in the name of Jesus, let the worry stop and replace it with peace in the name of Jesus. Lord, there's a mother here tonight that's concerned about the issues of her family. 
Nobody sees her tears. She don't know who to talk to. But she's come to talk to you tonight. And God, you are the healer of our sons and our daughters. Of the husbands and the wives. The children. And God, you do such great things. And someone that is hurting, worried about the decision they got to make. Somebody that's hurt them, somebody that's taken advantage of them. Lord Jesus, touch them. You have a person in this room, I'm going to tell you something. The Holy Spirit is here. A good way to honor him in the posture, not only of your standing, but if you just lift your hands, which God says, lift holy hands to me. Let the presence of Jesus do his work. Let him breathe into your being, your soul. And he sees you. Let him wipe your tears. Let him heal your body. Let him deliver you. Thank you, Jesus. Now with your hands lifted, keep them lifted. This is how you should honor him. You say things like this with your eyes closed. He's, he's right in front of you. He's smiling at you. He's not, he's not mad at you. He's smiling. And he just needs to hear Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's the highest praise word in all languages. Hallelujah. Just keep those holy hands lifted. You watching, lift your hands right there at the home. Watching from the phone. Lift your hands, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He loves that. He loves that. Hallelujah. Sing it to him. Sing it right in his face. Hallelujah. Sing right in the face of God. Hallelujah. Okay, one more thing. Just if your arms are not tired, just keep them up a little bit, and he likes this too. Because he said in the last days there would be a generation that would not be thankful. So tonight, show him you're thankful. And here's what you do. I thank you, Jesus. Come on, let it come out of your mouth. I thank you, Jesus. Sing to him. Let him know you're thankful. So good. So good. So good. So good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Put your hands together as a sign of posture of prayer right now. Just put your hands together like I am and or fold them and, and just say a few words to him in appreciation. Do it, it, you can do it silently or loud, but you just tell him how much you love him, everyone. Don't worry about the people behind you, in front of you. Go on, tell them, I love you. I love you, Yeshua. I love you, mighty one. You're so good to me. Thank you for my children. Thank you for my fine and thank you for my help. Thank you for my life. Go on, go on, talk to him. You're a mighty God and I, I could never give you the praise. I, I could never thank you enough. And everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Now, let's put both of our hands together and make a ring of noise. You're so good, eh? Wow, you're doing a good job. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, that's good. That's so good. He likes that. You're mighty. You're mighty, oh God. You're mighty. You're mighty. Better than you. Can't thank you enough. Now you got you got to do this because he's touched you and. No telling what he's done for you. So everybody here right now, even though you had, you know, when you got out of the car, you had trouble, you had a lot of things, but the Lord has given everybody peace. The Lord is touching your needs. So I want to tell everybody, don't worry about tomorrow and don't worry about what's going to happen after the service. God has got it all under control. Come on. Come on, balcony. Come on, you. Thank you, Yahshua. So, you know what I want you to do? I want you to put a smile on your face, and I actually want you to say nice things to people you don't know, and you do know. And you could say things like this. So good to see you. I appreciate you. God bless you. Say those things to one another right now, all over the building, in the balcony, for you. God bless you. Thank you for being with us. You guys will stay with me. Just stay with me. And. Okay, that's enough. Sit down. That's enough. I didn't think you'd go crazy, but. No, no, I, 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 uh, I respect that. I, 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 for you, for you. I, I would like for, I want, I want to, we're going to do something. This is going to take just a few moments. This is a highly important anticipated moment that you are going to get to actually witness a book of Acts. Tonight's about signs and wonders and there's some exciting things that the Lord is really, uh, showed me in scriptures for you that it's really going to do some it's going to give you great benefits but we're going to do something tonight that they did in the book of Acts they chose men full of the Holy Spirit and the Bible says that they laid hands upon them and they they deaconized them they ordained them as ministers and they became very effective in the laying on of hands I will read a scripture over them, but tonight all of you are going to get to be a part of a marriage of ordination. You're going to be the witnesses, the church. This will only take a few moments, but it is a very, very, very special moment. I remember, I remember when I was 18 years of age and I was in a congregation of people and ministers and I was ordained. Now that crowd probably don't remember that service. People who were there have gone on in life. They don't remember it. But I'll never forget it because I was ordained. Hands were laid upon me and something happened to the spirit. And that night the congregation joined in in the agreement of the anointing to come upon my life. And, and they may have forgotten it only to remember it was a night of ordination. And, but they were a participant in, in watching the marriage of the Holy Spirit come down and sanction me. And from that day forward, from that day forward, I have been an ordained minister. And there's, there, there's a reigning, there's an anointing when this is done biblically. So I've asked the singers, thank you, Tavon, and all of you, this is a very, this is a very uh, unique moment. 
And uh, one of the most talented, gifted people I have met in the last couple years is uh, Kayron. He was here last week, the prophet. Anybody enjoy the prophet? Now, I know he's hard to understand because he comes from India, but he'll get better because I'm going to help him. And, but his gift is, is pure. M Melody asked him and his wife yesterday, what is, this, what is your purpose in life? What, what, what do you want to achieve? First thing that came out of his mouth and I was listening to the conversation and he says, the most important thing to me is Jesus. And he said, I spend hours with him every single day and to have fellowship with him, to get his blessings. He said, he means more to me than my family, my daughter, my wife, and yet I love them, but this is an inseparable cause that I have. So I've watched him for two years. He has been in Bible seminary. And for you that are acquainted with the name Rama, Kenneth Hagin, one of the greatest prophets of our day who has gone on to be with the Lord and the ministry is being carried out by those he put into place. One of them is his son. So for two years in Tulsa, he's done seminary study of the word of the Lord. And um, two years ago, he came here and BJ brought him. And um, I, I, I have to tell you this so that you will, your family, I, you, we need to be intimate in this moment because it's an intimate moment. So I'm going to be very intimate with you on what happened that day. So he was in my office and immediately he began to speak words about prophecy and things. And he began to talk about Bethlehem and I was wondering how he figured that. And then I said, yeah, he looked on the internet. He's got something he knows. So that didn't bother me. And then I thought to myself, I said, oh, Lord, he, he wants money. That's what he wants. So, so I was trying to be nice. I mean, this is an intimate. I don't say this, often, but we're family, and this is an intimate moment. And I want, I want it to be intimate because of what is going to transpire in the next few moments. And so I went in the other part of my office, and I said, i got to find some money somewhere. i got to, because he's an Indian, and he's probably from over the seas, and I'm, I'm just being intimate here. I, I was kind, I was nice, I'm always nice to everybody. And when I came back out, I still didn't have any money, but I was gonna to try to find some. And he walked right up to me and he said, the Lord told me to give you this $2,000. And that really freaked me out. Then I knew the guy, or the man, or the man of God, that this was different. Of course, I didn't want to take it. I said, no, no, you keep it. No, 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 I was already, because he didn't know that I was in the other office saying, oh, Lord, got to deal with another, you know, somebody wants something. And it was like God just slapped me up against the head and said, shut up, Steve. Let me show you something here. I mean, this is a real servant of mine. And uh, everything went into a different sphere of acceptance. Not that I reject people. I don't do that. I, but I was just, I was just in that kind of thinking. And then the Lord began to use him. And he's, in my opinion, out of everyone that I've met the last 30, 40 years in prophetic utterance, he's probably the most accurate I've ever met. And, and, uh, one-on-one, -on -one, it's, it, it's astounding when he says something and said, this is gonna happen, that's gonna happen, and it happens. And you kind of appreciate the gift of, that's given because you know it's of God. And so this is an intimate moment. This won't take long, but I, you need to be a part of this to know that he's family. So the Lord has called him to come and to work out of our church. 
Now, he has a following. The Bible says, know them that labor among you. He has a following, big following in the world. And in the middle of the night, sometimes he is ministering to, it goes into thousands of people sometimes. So all over the world, he has a following people all over the world, and he ministers to. And he ministers, so when you don't see him, He's somewhere in the world or in the country in much demand. So he's not coming here to take. He's really coming here to give. So the Lord had spoken to me in our university that we're, we're, our equestrian center is about to go up. We're getting the tractors and things are starting to move in a way in which as we begin to progress in the kingdom, that he will become a part to the point that we are... In the next few months, uh, we, want to, we want to implement in our university the School of the Prophets. And we want to biblically train and let the gift uh, begin to come upon people so that we can affect our neighbors and businesses and people. Because too many people are dependent upon horoscope. And that, that, that's not a God thing. But God has his own prophetical utterances. And, and it works in the body of Christ. So he will be moving here. He's got a wonderful wife and child. And, and they will be under the umbrella of Family Christian Center to get their citizenship in. Um, and he's very... He's very fond of Kent and has a tremendous burden for the city church and has done magnificent there and has done great. I would like for he and his wife, Karan, and would you come and stand here, you and your wife? And I would like the pastors to come and stand behind them. And um, you could bring your little girl. Yeah, come on, baby. Melody, I would like for you to come. Where's Mel? I want you to stand next to her. I'd like for the pastors to stand in place. Singers, you'll help me. And then I would like for the elders to stand in the church. Um, you can be seated just for a moment. What's that? Is that? Oh, that's hers. Okay. And so you'll be a part of this ceremony. And um, Pastor Mel, if you'll hold that. Mel, if you'll hold that. Now, I'm, and, and elders, if you'll step forward. Elders, step forward. And you may be seated, the rest of you, so that everybody can see this great, grand moment of ordination. This is how it's done biblically, and you, you're going to be a part of this. You witness it. And uh, you should participate because you never know when you're going to bump into him and he's going to say, i got a word for you. And that is a real gift in the body of Christ. So, um, you know, as a, I'm, I'm, I'm an American, and it's easier to pronounce Smith, Jones, than it is to pronounce these Indian names. But it is Prophet Karan. His last name is Morley. So just think of more. And Lee. And tonight he and his wife stand here in the presence of the church. And before I lay my hands upon you, and we lay hands upon you, and to anoint you, to ordain you in this incredible moment of your life, I read to you what Apostle Paul said to Timothy. And Sir and ma'am, I want to tell you that this was written when he was in prison. He's coming to the end of his life and he experiences cold and Timothy has traveled with him on the second and the third journey. But now Timothy is a young pastor in Ephesus and Timothy, he is writing to, two books he writes to him and he writes from Rome and 
Paul will live another four or five months and then he will be beheaded. He will be caught up in the manslaughter of a Hitler called Nero. Nero in his drunkenness, in his drunkenness, burn half of Rome down and blamed it on the Christians. So all of Rome went after Christians and they played games with the Christians like at the Colosseum. If you should ever go to Rome, you could go to the Colosseum. And Nero would take Christians and it would be packed with hundreds of thousands of people. It's a huge Colosseum. still remains there today. It's a phenomenal piece of history to a view if you go to Rome. Melody and I have been there. And Nero would take the Christians and put them out in the arena. And there would be, I think it's seats, about 120,000 in its heyday. And lions would come out and they would enjoy the lions eating Christians. He was a, he was a demon-possessed emperor of the world. He was worse than Hitler. And... Paul got caught up into Nero, and so did Simon Peter. They both were there under Nero, and Nero, of course, killed Peter by crucifying him on a cross, and Peter's request was upside down. He's writing to Timothy, and I must tell you this, and for every person that enters the ministry, when he brought Timothy aboard, Timothy's father was Greek and his mother was Jewish and under the law of Judaism, the father must make sure that the son is circumcised. And of course, that is a covenant that God made with Abraham. When Timothy, who was half Greek, came into the calling of his ministry and to be ordained, Paul said, Tim, I know this is going to be difficult for you because you're a grown man now. But where we go and preach, they're not going to accept you, the church, the saved people, because you're not circumcised. So I'm going to ask you to be circumcised. Here's a grown man, anointed of God. But Paul says they'll reject you, and I want you to be received by the body of Christ. Can you imagine that? And Timothy, a grown man, submits to that and goes through cir circumcision as an older gentleman so that he might be ordained. Now, the only reason why that was done is because of tradition. Paul just said, Timothy, to be accepted, because Paul says, I do all things to reach people. And already some people have already talked themselves out saying, well, praise God, I'm not going in the ministry. I'm, I'm out. Well, thank God we're under grace. That is not what we're suggesting. But I am suggesting the fact of this ordination is whatever it takes to reach people for Jesus Christ. <laughs> to eat with the sinner, to feed the hungry, to minister when you're tired, even when you're sick, that you will still be ordained and be set apart. So I read to you these words that Paul said. Paul said these words, I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience. Without ceasing, I have remembrance of thee, Timothy. So Paul would say, I have remembrance of you, Karen. In my prayers, night and day, I pray for you. And may the church have that always in their testimony. We will pray for the ministry night and day. Before we go to bed, we pray for ministry. We pray for pastors. Amen? Amen. And may the church say, I will pray. I'll pray. Greatly desiring to see thee. I, I want to see you, Timothy. Paul said from the cell of Rome he says I desire to see thee being mindful of the tears I have for you in other words there was such there was such feelings that I may be filled with joy and the reason why I said that 
prophet Kedron is because he wanted Timothy to be full of the anointing of God. And he goes on and says, when I call remembrance the unfine faith that is in thee, which dwelleth in first your grandmother Lois and in thine mother Eunice, I am persuaded in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. And I want to, when I anoint you and we lay hands upon you and this congregation stands in just a moment for this ordination, I want to tell you, prophet, don't wait on anybody to stir your gift up. Because people, you have to stir your own gift up. You can't wait for the ovations and the applauses and people saying how great you are. You have to stir your gift with nobody saying nothing. People reject you and people don't believe, etc. Stir the gift up. Wherefore I put thou in remembrance that thou stir the gift of God which is in thee by putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Be therefore not ashamed of the testimony of the Lord. And of course Paul says, nor me a prisoner, but be partakers of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Sir, be instant in season and out of season. And do not let any man despise your youth. And that when the ordination of this night is fulfilled, may there be, may there be paths and may there be gifts that are given to you. So now, will the congregation stand as I anoint the anointing of ordination? And I anoint him now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I anoint his wife. I anoint his child. Elders and pastors, put your hands upon ones in front of you. And now we lay hands. And we place our hands upon this man of God you have called. We ordain him in the name of Jesus Christ to walk the paths of righteousness. Let the Holy Spirit be upon him. And oh God, let the mantle of anointing of Elijah and Elisha be upon him and rest all the days of his life. Let his gifts blossom. And oh Lord, let no man despise his youth and Lord, let this anointing rest upon him. Congregation, stretch your hands forth. You're a part of this anointing and ordination. Say these words. Help me say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We declare. We declare. On this day. On this day. The ordination. The ordination. The calling. The calling. Of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. To come now. To come now. And fulfill, and fulfill the calling, the calling of, God. of God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus we command the ordination be upon you to be a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 The declaration in the name of Jesus. We commission him with the ordination certificate and give to you under the authority in the state of Indiana and Family Christian Center, you are now under the umbrella of this church. We congratulate you. Do the work of a prophet and do the work of God. Come on, cheer this moment on. This Hallelujah. 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 Congratulations. All of you shake his hand. You shake somebody's hand and say, we just did it. We added to the ministry. We added. 
Shake his hand, congratulate him. Congratulations, all of you pastors. Come on, elders, congratulate him. Then all of you will be able to do that after the service. Congratulate. You may be seated as they're doing that. While they're doing that, watch this, and then I'm going to give you a word. So this month is going to be a great month of evangelism. So listen, we didn't do 4-H because uh, they're ta they've taken all of our rigs down that we fly and new rigs are being put in. We've had those rigs up for 20 years. We flew Jesus out, angels. Now the new rigs are being put in. And so we're not able to do our uh, Scrooge because of all of the effects. But... Everything will be in order for Jesus of Nazareth. But um, so usually, so this month in two weeks, I will do eagle's nest. I'll build a two-story eagle's nest. I'll preach out of an eagle's nest and make all of you eagles. Anybody want to be an eagle? A couple of things I will do before the end of the year, but we are going to do this um, we're going to do this trunk for tree. And since it's now unsafe in our neighborhoods, most of them, we, we need 100 cars with trunks. Trunk of your car so that we'll help you put candy there. And the, and the neighborhoods and the community and your friends can come. Now, this is one of the largest things we do. You know, I'm amazed when you give candy away, everybody comes. I mean, thousands and thousands of people. It's amazing. We're going to have uh, food stands. We're going to have uh, carnival rides, a horse, and all of that. And then there's going to be a real treat we've never done. Is a hundred teenagers are going to do Thriller in two performances right here during Fall Festival, 5 to 7. It's free. So it's going to be a great time. So we need you to volunteer. This is for evangelism. This is for reaching our community. Everybody say reaching our community. These are people that come on the campus and we show them a good time and we give them candy. So this is soul winning. I want you to be a part of this. It's going to be the last Sunday of this month, 5 to 7. And uh, donate your car. We'll sign you up. Go to the back. There's a booth. Or bring candy. Bring candy so that we can fill the trunk up. Come and help us serve. Do something. But we're going to reach souls. We're going to reach people. And you can bring your families to love it. It's absolutely phenomenal. And uh, we always have fun. And some of you need to have some fun. You're boring. Come. Enjoy what God is going to do. Now, let me tell you something. This is very unusual to me. I told you that in 1948, before Christ, um, Abraham was born. And then in 2023, before Christ, God calls him out of the Chaldeans, calls him out of kind of a Babylonian place where is atheism. And God speaks to Abraham and says, I'm going to make a nation. I'm going to make you very rich. He does that in 2023 before Christ. Okay. Now, Abraham is the father of the Jews. He's the father of the Jews. What is astounding, blows my mind, that in 1948 A.D., after Jesus died, 
Israel becomes a nation after 2,000 years. Are you getting this? 1,000 years, he starts the nation in 1948 before Christ. And 1,000 years later, after 2,000 years not being in Jerusalem and in the Holy Land, Israel comes back and occupies it and becomes a state. Then, 75 years later, which is right now, 2023, I'm wondering what is going to happen. What is God going to do? He's going to, you better get ready. He's going to take you out of somewhere and put you in the land of living. Make you very rich and prosperous. Are you getting that? And May 14th of 2024, Israel will be 75 years of age on the biblical calendar. Abraham was 75. A thousand years later. Some, some, I, 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 you can't make this up. And let me tell you something else you can't make up. Tonight, the day after Feast of Tabernacles, who I've never met, Prince Amiel bin Israel. There is a tribe that came out of that seed of Abraham when he came out. And there are black Jews. Black Jews. Not African American Jews. Black Jews. And for generations they have they have congregated and they have come together. And there's a city 150 miles south of Jerusalem. And it's been in the land of Israel for 50 years with four generations. And these are black Jews. Now all of you can clap your hands. Let me just, let me just help you a little bit. You don't want to be mad about that because you know when Moses married a black woman, his sister said, you shouldn't have done that. And God put leprosy on the girl. I'd clap and fire you. I'd say, oh, well, I don't want that. That's a fact. So this is a black tribe in that of their roots to Abraham. This will blow your mind. I've never met him. But he's in our service tonight in 2023. I would like for Prince Emil Ben Israel to stand up. Would you stand up, Prince? He leads the tribe of the black Jewish nation. Would you welcome him to this service? God bless you, sir. Wow, you can't make this up. How in the world did this all happen? What's going on here? Yeah, look right in that TV camera. Put the TV camera on it. Don't, uh, help me, don't, dim, dim, na. How, much, how, how can I say the city? Demona. 150 miles south of Jerusalem. He's the prince of that city and leads the tribe. And he's here with us tonight. Can you welcome, you got to do something nice for the Jew people, for the Jewish culture. Thank you for being with us, sir. I hope you get to shake his hand after the service. Wow, that blows my mind. It's 2023. What else is God going to do? This is a sign. I think it's a kind of a sign. Anyway, I think it's a sign. Just for a few minutes, I want to I release upon you to have the ability to have signs and wonders in your life. And I, I don't know where this thinking has come. Maybe, maybe I have uh, participated and didn't mean to. But sometimes we think that the only people that can have the gifts of the Spirit operate is ministry. That's wrong thinking. Now, there is a fivefold ministry that is, that is to perfect us, and that's in order. There is prophets and there is teachers. Well, you could take your hand. It's a good illustration that you could take your hand and... 
And the little fingers, the teacher, and the ring fingers, the pastor, and the, 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 the tallest finger is the evangelist, the outreach, the Billy Graham reaching souls, and the pointing finger is the prophet, and the thumb is the apostle because it has the ability to touch them all. And they perfect the saints. Somebody would say to me, what are you? Well, I've noticed that my calling is really an apostle because sometimes I teach. Sometimes I pastor. I'm a good evangelist because we're always reaching people, you know. And then God will use me as a prophet to point the direction. So the apostle, true about, now some people are just teachers. They, don't, they, they can't do more. You've got some people that can teach and pastor. And then you've got some pastors that uh, can evangelize or are an evangelist. This is for the perfecting of saints. You, then you've got prophets that can teach, etc. And God cultivates that to perfect the saints. But now the saints, all of you that are born again, I want to I wanna tell you that the devil has uh, got into our thinking that we are either not spiritual enough, we're not good enough, that we can have the gifts of the Spirit. And But let me forewarn you that when you're using the gifts of the Spirit, don't you dare take any credit for it. You will find yourself, you will find yourself in critical, critical error with God. The only reason why that Satan cannot be saved and repent, and he's not because he, he, he crossed the line, he crossed the line, and the reason why Satan and his angels have no ability to ever recall what they've done is because angels don't have blood. Only people that have blood can be redeemed by the blood. And Satan, watch this, when he crossed the line, not only in rebellion, not only in saying, I want to be God, not only convincing a third of the heavens. So every now and then somebody will say, hey, so-and-so's left the church, and hey, what about the church? Let me just tell you something. If God can't keep all of heaven together, I ain't going to keep everybody. So get your eyes off of that. Why? What did Satan do? He did something very dangerous. And he crossed the line that he could never, ever come back. He knows that. He knew what he was doing. And the third of the angels... And God then went on and said, I'm going to create a hell for you. They already know what's going to happen. And they knew, they knew when they crossed the line. What did Satan do? He was a music director. He was a song leader. He was, he was the rock star of heaven. He was second in command in leading the worship. He was the uh, artful music director, Hollywood. He was the entertainer for God. He was called son of the morning. Here's what he did wrong. He stole or tried to steal the glory. And he said, give me the ovation. Bow down to me and tell me I'm a good singer. Tell me I am great. And when he crossed that line, there was no redemption because there's no blood in the angels there's no redemption because redemption is in blood. And in our case, we believe in the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And he was the lamb that was slain for and his blood for our sins. So he crossed the line because he took glory. It's very dangerous when you are gifted and God blesses you. And you stupidly, excuse me, you can ask God to forgive me later, stupidly think that you're some kind of God. Here's an example. God blesses you with money and that becomes your God. But the worst thing about it of it is, is that you take the glory for doing it 
And then you be, make yourself a God. And you say, hands off, God. I'll make my own decisions. You just cross the line. Every one of us should be wealthy, but the problem is, is we can't handle the gift of wealth. But if you get to the point that God can trust you, but everybody must pass the test. And you must say, even though I was blessed, I give all the glory to God. And, and, I, and I, I just, I don't want to belabor this thought, but I'm just giving this as an example because I'm going to talk about several gifts and I want to impart them and then miracles will happen throughout the night and the rest of the week in your life. And that is this, uh, in Deuteronomy, God speaks to us and he says, he says, never say these words, uh, I have the power to get wealth. Well, that's 35 of you. You don't believe me? Okay, I'll, I'll prove it to you. I'll prove it to you. you. You think I'm lying. You think I'm making this stuff up. You, 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 no, 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 no. Because, because it's not my word. It's his word in his word. It lasts forever. Okay. Just give me a moment. Just give me a moment. Because when... You're tempted by the devil. You can't use your logic. You got to do what Jesus did. You use the word. The Bible said it was the word. He rebuked the devil with the word. Listen, listen to what God said. He says, and it's found in uh, Deuteronomy 8 chapter. He says, and thou say in thy heart, my power and my strength hath gotten me this wealth. 18th verse, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get well. That he may establish his covenant, which is sworn unto thy fathers as it is this day. Listen to this, listen to this. This is crossing the line, acting like you don't need God. And it shall be, if thou do it all, forget the Lord thy God. And walk after other gods and serve them and worship them. I will testify against you this day and you will die. Or the Bible says you will surely perish. Can you get the gift of receiving and the power to be wealthy that you don't go crazy? And you can give him all the glory and say, it is God which has done this. That's very, very important. That's some of the gifts that are going to be imparted to you according to Corinthians. Look at Corinthians quickly. I want to go through this list of, of gifts in which the impartation is going to be. Everybody say tonight, say, I'm ready to receive, to receive gifts. gifts. Ready? Yes. What kind of gifts? Well, 1 Corinthians 12 gives us instruction, very good instruction, and says these words. We're going to start, well, we're going to start, there we are. Now there are diversities of gifts, but there's the same spirit. In other words, and there are differences of ministration, but the same Lord. Okay? Next verse. And there are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Okay. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to, everybody say, every man. Doesn't say ministers. It says every man to profit you. To profit you. Tonight, somebody's curse of poverty is going to be broken. Tonight... Tonight, there is going to be an impartation and there is going to be profit of some kind of miracle that's going to bust, it's going to crack, it's going to break the chain, it's, it, it's going to set you free, your family, something. <laughs> Everybody say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, so what are these gifts? 
that I'm about to release in the name of Jesus and want them to be on you. The next verse says, for one is given the spirit of the word of wisdom. Another the word of knowledge by the same spirit, the Holy Spirit. To another, these are the gifts. Another faith. Now this faith is not the faith that you were all given when you were born because to every man is a measure of faith. But there's a gift. There's another gift. There's a gift of faith. You have the faith. You got saved. You're here. You're living by faith. But there is another gift. And this gift, this gift operates when you covet it. So, and, and that gift of faith is, is in high level. That it, it, it can move mountains. It can move cancers. It can, it can build buildings. It can change nations. How many would like to have that kind of faith that what you speak, it comes into existence? That's the kind of faith. To another, the gifts of healing. The gifts of healing. Gifts of healing. Let's keep moving here so we can move through this. Another, next verse, uh, same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. In other words, there is a gift with the Holy Spirit that when it comes to you, it operates and miracles are supernatural. Just things happen that you say, wow, what that, whoa. Anybody would like to have that gift tonight? The, the operation of miracles. To another, a prophecy. A best way to say prophecy there is proceed. Proceed. Proceed your future. Speak to your future. Speak to it. I will not be broke. I will not be disgusted. My children will not be lost. I speak over my children. They're going to be blessed. They may be living for the devil and hell may be in their life. But in the name of Jesus, the devil's going to have to let them go. I am prophesying over my children. I am prophesying over my family. Anybody like to do that over your children and your grandchildren? You can have, this is a gift. To another discerning of the spirits. That's simply knowing what to do. Should I do this? I don't like that. You ever been somewhere with someone you didn't know and say, mm, something here, not right. Have you ever gone down the street and said, mm, I think I better turn around and go the other way. Have you ever walked down an aisle of a store and you said, I, I don't know, I'm not going to walk down there. I'm going to go over here right now. And you didn't know, but there was something. That's a discerning. Listen, that's a gift. To another discerning, to, to another diverse kinds of tongues, it simply means that there is a, a time in which God uses you uh, in, in the speaking of tongues, uh, a language you don't understand. And then there is the interpretation of tongues, which is uh, a dimension in which if someone speaks in tongues, especially in the moving of God's spirit, and, and you have the interpretation. You don't understand what they're saying, but God gives you the gift of interpretation. This is a gift. It's a great gift. It's a wonderful gift. Don't let it... Don't let it... Um, don't let it... Um, scare you, it's, it, 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 it's a great gift. And then, so, so now I'm going to share with you, and I, I'm going to go down, I'm not going to read the whole scripture verse, but this is in Corinthians. Now, if we go to Romans, the 12th chapter, real quickly here, there's some other gifts. And you go to Romans, the 12th chapter, and they can bring it up having different gifts according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy, or proceed. I want everybody in this room right now, in the name of Jesus, I want the gift to come upon you and I want you to prophesy about the rest of your week. And this is what you should say. It's going to be a good week. Come on, speak it. Now, 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 now let me tell you something about prophecy. Prophecy is, can only be done with the tongue of a man. Bible says your tongue is like a rudder of a ship or it's like a bridle in a horse's mouth. When you speak words out of your mouth, you give complete direction to your body. You put yourself in the direction. Don't worry about moving forward because God orders your steps and the motor is turned on and you go that direction. Ah, uh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. If you don't point the direction, you could be going in all kinds of directions. Now look at this. This is Romans. This is another a place of the gifts for you. Uh, whether it's prophesied, let's prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Now tonight, in conclusion, in a few minutes, I will prophesy. 
I may walk up to some people and say, this is going to happen to you. Now, let, let me tell you, I'm not doing that because I'm trying to impress you or somebody else may do that. You should then immediately say these words, I agree with that. Now, the reason why I suggest that, the reason why I suggest that is because the Bible says when two agree, when two agree, if you can get somebody to agree with you, the word of God has said that God said it is done. If you can get two, I mean, if you can really get two people, I'm not talking about feeling sorry for you. Uh, let, me, let me help you on something. I'm talking about going into the spirit of manifestations of the spirit of God. You can't go there with emotions. You can get people to feel sorry for you and you can feel sorry for yourself and you get an agreement and all you're doing is sitting in a puddle of tears and nothing's going to move. You got to get in a position, in a position of spiritual to believe that if somebody says, I got cancer, you, gotta, you can't feel sorry for them. You can't say, oh my God, it's terrible. Oh my God, your kids, your wife, your husband. God. You got to rise above that emotion level and say, I'm going to go into faith and believe that you are not going to have cancer in your life. The reason why more healings don't happen, the gift of healing doesn't happen, is because we are so emotional about it. And especially when, like Melody the other night, Melody uh, Shaylee, uh, of course, she had her gallbladder out, but several nights before, I had went to sleep, and I went into a real deep sleep. And Melody was up in the middle of the night. She said, I got up, but I was walking in my sleep. And she had her hand up on Shay Lee's stomach and she was praying in that tongues thing. I don't, I don't have time to uh, belabor this, but let, let me teach you about tongues. When you speak in tongues, you don't understand it. Neither does the devil. And watch this. The reason why he fights the religious world to not get the gift of tongues is because Satan wants to understand your prayer because he hears what you're praying. Oh God, I'm believing for a miracle. Satan's sitting there saying, and yeah, buddy, you got to walk through me for you get him. Lord, I'm believing for a healing. Oh yeah, you sucker. I'm going to pour it on you. Oh Lord, I'm believing for a money. He hears that. But when you go into a language and when you speak in tongues, you don't know what you're saying. And the reason why that God made it where you would not understand what you're saying is because he don't want you to get any glory. Because you'll never, ever find the formula. Let me tell you what I mean. Sometimes I pray for people and I'll pray for people, you know, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, he's healing you. In the name of Jesus. And I'll go around I'll go around four or five people and boy, I mean, you could just feel people receive it. Woo, hallelujah, I got it. And you go, well, yeah, whoo, I feel the Holy Spirit. You get to moving around, you go, woo, boy, the power. Some people fall out and some people, oh, ha, woo, ha, yeah, 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 yeah. Then you get to the sixth person and nothing happens. So you go back and you say, what did I say over there that I can say here? And you start formalizing something so that you could get it on that person. God will never give you the formula. You only got one name. You can use his name. So this is free. This is free for about a moment. For you that don't understand tongues, let, let, me, just, let me just abbreviate this. When you speak in tongues, when you... When you when you speak in tongues, when you say, and really, you want to understand the words you say. Some of you want to do it. Go to your bathroom tonight. Turn on the faucet. Turn on all the water. So nobody hear you. And flush the commode. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because you're afraid to do it. The devil doesn't want you to do it. It's like a baby talking. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Mom, mom, mom. It's the same way in the spirit. 
You're not going to be clearly defining, I have the Holy Spirit, I have the gift of tongues, so I can enter into that. What did you say? Had no idea. Because the Spirit maketh intercession. For the Bible says, with, with, with groanings and utterances, you don't know what you're saying. Uh, you're looking at me like, oh my God, this is weird. This guy is really good. I'm, I'm out of here. Give me a church that don't talk about this. Yeah, and you'll end up in a funeral parlor next Sunday morning with a dead service. Listen to me. Isn't it interesting that God spoke everything into existence on one, two, three, four, five, six. He stops, makes man, breathes into him. And the Bible says on the seventh day, he rested. You and I, our elevator don't even have to go to the top to know when did God need rest? He didn't say to Gabriel, give me a pillow. I'm exhausted. I made Yellowstone. I made the Grand Canyon. I, oh, I'm exhausted. I made the Himalayas. I put the Atlantic and I'm putting the ocean. Get me a bed. I am exhausted. Let me tell you, the Bible said he's unsearchable. He, 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 there is never no end of God. So what did it mean when God said on the seventh day he rested? Well, you have to go to Isaiah. I'm talking about tongues now. You have to go to Isaiah, and Isaiah says, this is the rest. That in an unknown tongue, I will speak to my people. Let me go, let me, let me slow down, slow motion. And this is the rest. And I will speak to my people. In an unknown tongue. Okay? So watch this. On the seventh day, God changed languages on the devil. He entered into a rest of a tongue that the devil couldn't understand. Oh, come on. Come on, pastor. Prove it to me. I will. For when Jesus was on the planet... And he was watching Jesus thinking he's just another prophet. He's just another teacher. And when he took him to Golgotha and the Romans killed him, put nails in his hands and nails in his feet, Satan stood there and said, ha, another prophet. I just killed you. Way for me. Ha. And when Jesus said, it is finished, the Bible said Satan had no idea who he was. Read it. The Bible said, had he had known who he was. Oh, you're not with me. Had he known who he was. The Bible said, Satan would have never crucified him. Are you ready? Here's the catch. Here's the catch. Because this secret was kept. Since when? The foundation of the world. Because on the seventh day, God changed languages on the devil. Did you get that? Was that too fast? For the Bible said this secret was kept since when? The foundation of the world. Meaning that God changed languages on the devil and had God spoken, which he did, predestinated that there was going to be, there was going to be the covenant of Abraham, Prince, and there was going to be the covenant of, uh, of a seed that in the third chapter of Genesis that was going to smash the devil's head in. And, oh, yeah. And, and the devil couldn't figure out who he was. But baby, when they rolled the stone in place... He got up and said, let's have the party. Let the party begin. While Satan was drinking Jack Daniels and having the biggest party with a third of the heavens, Jesus walks into the party and Satan looks at him and says, take that mask off. That's so funny. 
take his mask off, join the party and have a drink. Jesus said that no mask on me. You know who I am? Look at my hands, look at my feet. What you don't know is I'm the first and I'm the last. I'm the beginning, I am the end. I am the king of kings. I am Alpha Omega, beginning and the end. the keys of death. Okay, settle down. That's good. We all want to act right in front of the prince here. We don't want to. So talking in tongues is a gift. Somebody said, do I have to do it? Absolutely not. You get to though. It's a gift. And when you get it, start praying in it, you'll drive the devil absolutely crazy. And here's the good part about it. You pray the perfect prayer because the Spirit maketh intercession for you. I don't care what you think about me. I'm not praying to you, nor am I praying to men, nor am I pressing anybody else. I am edifying to God, to hell with the devil. So get the gift, get it, just get it, just get it. <laughs> Prophesying, serving, these are the gifts in Romans, teaching, encouraging, giving. There's a gift of giving. David, you got that gift. The more David gives, the more I say to God, God, make Ibram rich. Because he keeps giving. The reason why some of you are broke and you are in financial failure, you started out good, but you got a little bit and then you got tight and you quit giving. And God called you into the ministry of giving. But you got to buying stuff instead of giving. Which you could have the stuff. But when you give, it just keeps it just keeps getting bigger. Leaders, leadership and mercy. So there's prophesying, serving, teaching. Help me. Um, Tavon. Giving, leadership, mercy. Everybody say prophesying. Serving. serving teaching. teaching encouraging. encouraging. I think one of the uh, Melody's friends here tonight, Kim, uh, one of the greatest gifts she's got is encouraging. I, we've known her for 20, 30 years. It don't matter what she's going through, she'll walk into the room and there, there's just a gift of encouraging. Many of you have it. I have it. If you're ever around me, I'm saying, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Could be going through hell and wish that, oh God. Yeah. But when you have the spirit of encouraging, you give that person, you forget about what your problems are. And, and you find out if you, if you encourage other people, Rick, you got that. He's my next door neighbor. He comes over. How you doing, pastor? You're a great pastor. He always comes and says, man, you were fired up last night. You were fired up yesterday. He, he's encouraging. Encouraging. Words of wisdom. I'm about to pray this on you. In other words, you can wake up in the morning and the Bible teaches us, covet the gift what you need that day. I need wisdom. All of a sudden, you'll be on the job, and when nobody has the answer, say, hey, what about this? And they'll say, well, what did you say? And then they'll come back to you and say, you just saved us $25,000. We're going to give you a bonus. Wisdom attracts money. 
I didn't get very many men. Let me help you. Let me help you. No, 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 no. It's not fair. Let me help you. When God asked Solomon, what do you want? Solomon could have said, I want money. Instead, he said, I need wisdom. God gave him the gift of wisdom and then made him a multi, multi billionaire. Wisdom will lead you to money. Word of knowledge. I need a word. Do I buy this? Do I don't buy that? Don't be, don't be ashamed. Car salesman said, I think I'll take that. How are you going to pay for it? Cash. What? Yes. Yeah. We, we, yeah. Did you say cash? Yes. Yep, cash. Are you serious? Cash. And then all of a sudden you feel something said, no, no, don't buy that. You go back. Sorry, sir. I'm not going to get that one. Huh? I need to wait. It's a word of wisdom. Something not right. Maybe God has got a better deal for you. Faith, the gift of faith, to really have the gift of faith to believe for the impossible. Then the miraculous. Some of you need miracle gifts because there are things that are not going to be fixed by your doctor, nor your lawyer, nor your marriage. You need the gift of miracles. Somebody say, I need a miraculous miracle. <laughs> Prophecy, powers. Or speaking tongue, we talked about that interpretation. Healing helps. There's an illness in your body. You're taking medicine at this moment. Right now. You know better than anybody else you need a healing because what is happening to you is not working. The medicine, the doctor's call. You need a miracle. You need healing. Harabokushoyo. Now I'm about to do something right now. Just give me a moment. God, I covet now because the Bible tells us Covet earnestly the best gift. This is, this is right for all of us to do this. God, at this moment in the closing moments of us together, Lord, Lord, give me the gift of healing. I want the gift of healing. Please, Lord, give it to me. I give you all the glory. All right. Every person in this room, don't you dare stand casually. If there is a heart problem, a cancer, high blood, I don't know. You get ready that when I tell you, will you please stand because the gift of healing through the name of Jesus is going to go right into your body. Are you listening to me? By you standing and acknowledge the sake, I need a healing. We will go into agreement and the power of God is going to come and you're going to be touched. Because I have coveted healing. The Bible said that Jesus would go into cities and he healed them all. Why can't this whole service be healed tonight with the signs and wonders? So, is it a nerve? Is it a valve? Is it a heart? Doesn't have to be serious or it could be. But you know better than anybody, I need this healing in my body. I gotta get rid of this headache. This headache, it, it just won't go away. I can't take medicine. I, can't. I need the healing. Let me tell you something else might be an addiction you're addicted to um some of maybe food maybe something you can't break maybe sugar you you need a healing because it's not doing you any good it's it's it, it's hurting your body i don't know i don't know I, I don't know if anybody's like that but you won't know either because there'll be many probably several people stand up what i'm going to do is i'm going to ask you that need a healing the gift, I've asked God to give me the gift. And when you stand, I'm going to say in the name of Jesus, and the power of God is going to come upon you. And it's going to heal you. 
Who are you in this room or watching? You need a healing. Stand to your feet. Singers, would you come? Just Everybody look around. Everybody look around. Just turn around. It's all right. Look at all this. Now look up here. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to tell you something. Usually when God speaks and he speaks in revelation, it'll be more than two or three people. For let his word be established among two or three. I ask God for the healing gift. There is nothing special about me. I'm Steve Muncy. I'm human. But I have prayed and I know how to covet the best gift right now is healing. Lift your hands like this, please. I want you to say these words to Jesus. I want you to say, Jesus, Jesus. I believe. I believe. Now, I want you to do one more thing before I ask God to heal you. I want you to ask for the gift of faith. You already got faith. I'm talking about the gift. So as you're standing here, I want you, and I'm going to help you, lead you. I want you to say, Lord, I covet the gift of faith. It's a supernatural faith. So everyone that wants that faith, say with me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, want I want the gift, the gift of, faith. of faith now. Everybody say now. now. Your hands are lifted. You're lifted at home. I'm going to say exactly what I'm supposed to say. It will be words from the Bible. It will not be my words. I will say exactly the words of the Bible. I will do exactly what's been instructed with the gift of healing. I'm going, to, I'm going to say the name of every other name. I'm going to use the name of Jesus. And then I'm going to say by his stripes we are healed. This is very biblical. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to receive this? I'm, you got to get your faith up. I'm ready to receive it. Here I go. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Lamb of God, the stripes you took upon your back in Pontius Pilate's court, I command now that all sickness, all blood, all diseases be healed now in the name of Jesus. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, go on and do it. Thank you, Lord. Go on. Thank you, Lord. Go on. Go on. Say it to him. Thank you, Lord. It's coming. It's in you. It's coming in my body. It's healing you. It's healing your liver. It's healing your stomach. It's healing the vertebrae. It's healing your blood. It's healing. It's healing a kidney. It's healing a bladder. It's healing, 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 healing. Everybody, everybody that's standing, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down now, sit down. Sit down. And everybody, you help me here. Everybody in the building say, we are healed. We are healed. Now, this is the big one. Here we go. This is the big one. 
For you that stood a few minutes ago, this is where you're going to draw the line on the devil in your flesh. Whether you feel the manifestations or not, because we don't walk by sight, you're going to take your faith and for everyone that believes you were healed, that the spirit of healing went into you, the gift of healing went into you. I want you to stand and tell the devil and give glory to God and take your faith and say, I know I'm healed. If you don't feel that, don't stand. But if you say, I know I'm healed, stand now in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands, everyone in this building. Let the power of healing go into your body. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen to the Holy Spirit. You know what the Holy Spirit is telling me? Say, this is what, he's, this is what I see. And, and a lot of times I see this when I pray for people's healing. All of you, ooh, robo, excuse me. I'm sorry, Jesus. My goodness. I see every one of you that's standing. There's an angel going home with you tonight. And the Bible says there is healing in the wings of an angel. That angel's going to hover over your bed and they're going to fan your body with healing. Healing, healing. Oh, somebody just believe it and say, I receive it. That's a word of God. That's, that's a biblical thing. You maybe see, uh, we're gonna go here, we're late. And you know, Rick, keep standing. Rick Newell, he's my neighbor. I know his situation. I know his situation. So I don't want you to think that I'm super spiritual, but I'm gonna tell you about him. I know that there is no discovery and there's more that the enemy's trying to do to your body. And he's trying to put fear and but it's 750 don't ever come back to this church again if god in 10 days don't heal completely your body don't you ever come to my house don't you ever come to my house and say hello to me instead look at me and say you're nothing but a false prophet you're a fake because i'm standing here with the gift of faith and I'm going to command in the name of Jesus that your body will be healed. Will somebody else believe God with me in the name of Jesus? Completion. Your liver, your spleen. God heal. Rick Newton. He may be seated. Now, I didn't do that to impress you. I'm about to lose my neighbor. I'm on the high wire. I'm on the high wire. I'm on the high wire. But I, either I believe it or I don't believe it. I got to walk on water. I got to believe God. I'm not ashamed. In my office, in closing, in my, we could do all this all night, but next week we continue signs of wonder. But in my office is a bolt bigger, as big as my fist. And one day the Lord spoke to me and told me, he said, you better tell, and he's in our church. And I said, uh, something wrong with the bolts. This is several years ago. I don't want you to put the dots together because I don't want anybody to get sued, but these are big, huge bolts. They're in, it's in my office. And, I'll never forget telling him, I said, something is wrong with that building. It was a huge building. In fact, 60,000 people could get in this building. And he kept saying to me, he says, what are you talking about? And I said to him, I don't know. Two weeks later, hey, something wrong with the bolts of the building you're building. 
and he laughed I'll never forget it he said what are you saying and I had to admit to him I don't know third time June 1st never forget it something wrong with that building check the bolts he flew to that city told his general go up check some bolts see if they're all right and they check one bolt and it popped loose and they checked the second bolt it popped loose 26,000 bolts had to be replaced had there been that Colosseum full in the vibrations of that building we would have all heard about it but when God speaks I got the bolt it's in my eyes when God speaks so what I said tonight I did through the gift of faith and I did for every one of you and next week I will continue signs and wonders and there will be more things that God will do so bring the sick bring anybody you want as God begins to operate we got to go home how many's enjoyed the service so far I love you um we have to take an offering to keep the lights on. So, will you give? Will you give an offering? Will you give? This is better than the movies. How much do you pay to go to the movies? Tonight, what you saw was the demonstration. How many enjoyed the word of the Lord tonight? So you give an offering. I give an offering. Come on, reach in, grab your phones. Let this be a moment of, Lord, I want to give you an offering. I want to give my atonement. I want to give, Lord, I want to give. Everybody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ushers in the balcony, you that are watching me, you can do this right now. I'm going to put one more blessing as we are about to depart. Would you sing a little bit as they give? Give Just give, 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 give. And a thousand generations, your family. Your children, and their children, and their children, face faithful to be upon you, and a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children, face faithful to be upon you, and a thousand generations, and your family. Your children and their children and their children may His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may His blessings go before you and behind you and beside you all around you. standing in the building everybody standing in the building thank you guys everybody say everybody lift your right hand and you that gave my phones lift your phones up I'd like for everybody to bring your debt your debt on a piece of paper next Wednesday night your debt your whole debt your house your car your bills Next week, we're going to claim the gift of the power of wealth. That is going to be one of the signs and wonders. Next week will be a strong night in new businesses, creative works. Everybody say, oh God. Oh God. We give our offerings. Give our offerings. Thank you. Thank you.
for what you have done tonight. By the way, folks, some of you are going to have to quit paying the $400 a month medicine bill because God is going to do a work in your life. So tonight, hey, tonight Jesus made a doctor's appointment with you and didn't charge you one dime. It cost him because he took the stripes on his back but he didn't charge you aren't you glad you can give to him everybody say I love to give, love to give. so father, so father receive, receive our giving in the name of Jesus Prince I hope you enjoyed the service tonight from Palestine hope you get to meet him Prophet, all of you were so nice tonight. Are you glad you came tonight? Turn around and tell somebody. Sunday's going to be great. Take us out of here. May his favor be upon you and a thousand. I want to say thank you. I want to say what a joy to be with you on your telephone on your television set or your computer, ever how you're receiving this signal, I wanna tell you, I really felt that you, you had to hear this and the impartation had to come to you. Wherever you may be, it was a God night. Thank you for being a participant in the ordination of a prophet, Prophet Kedron. He's a mighty man of God. Tonight, you heard and met people that are affecting the world. Tonight, there was an impartation as you saw, and even you. I looked into the camera, and we believed for the impartation to come upon you. Let the gifts move. Covet earnestly the best gift. Go on and believe. These are the, these are the power tools in which God says, this is how I am going to bless you. We're in the double portion. And I want to excite you that these are great and wonderful days. We know that Israel is in turmoil. We know the whole country is in turmoil. We know that the world is in turmoil. But God is going to use you and I to impart wisdom and knowledge to show other people that God is the God of peace. I, I always love to give everybody an opportunity as we gave tonight, you saw the people giving. Will you join in and let the Wednesday night be the night in which you give the special offering? As you begin to say, Lord, here is my offering. I, I worshiped, I heard the word of the Lord. You still have that opportunity. And I wanna tell you that great things are happening at Family Christian Center. And even though the Lord may be coming soon, we're gonna occupy. We're going to do big things for God. And those things are happening right now. Now I'm excited to tell you that in a few weeks we're going to have a trunk or treat. This is our fall festival. This is our time in which we reach out to our neighborhoods and tell them to come. We need as many trunks, when I mean trunks, car trunks, to come and sign up. And candy will be in your trunk. And children from our community will come and they will have a night of trunk and treat. There will be horse rides, there will be hay rides. Upon this campus, there will be all kinds of blow ups and, and carnival excitement and a special presentation of Thriller. Oh, wait till you hear about that. That's going to be at the Fall Festival. Live music, there will be food, and we are expecting it to be evangelism. Introducing people to our church, people who don't normally come to our church, they will come to Trunk or Treat, and that will be on the 29th on Sunday night from five to seven. We are so excited about that because what are we doing? We are introducing people to Jesus Christ through the method of Trunk or Treat. We are exciting them who we are, getting around us and letting them see Christians for children, for young people, for, for middle-aged people, and even for people who are mature. 
You don't want to miss it. It will be so much fun. This Sunday is going to be an exciting Sunday. I will continue. I will continue. There's a miracle in your mouth. The second week of teaching in which there is a release of how to get the miracle in your mouth. In a week or so, I'm going to build the eagle's nest and the eagle's nest is going to be in place. I'm going to go up into the nest and I'm going to preach you are an eagle, how to be an eagle. That's going to be exciting. There are so many exciting things, the big Christmas Eve service and all the Thanksgiving services. And as we begin to enter into this season, God's going to do great things. I can't wait to see you Sunday because I'm burning with a, a great fervency of getting and watching the miracle that is in your mouth to manifest. I also want to say that Friday morning is prayer. I will be here at six o'clock seeking God. I hope you will join me. Join me by way of, 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 of your telephone or your screen, but plug in to the prayer meeting from six to seven. God always meets us there. Bring your children Sunday, young people on Wednesday night. Things are happening. Come and be a part of a church that's growing. I just want to tell you, I am so excited about the impartation that God did with you. God loves you. We need you. Together, we can change the world. And remember, yes, you can.